Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel this week. Today's episode is all about whether or not Fuji will soon upgrade their 16 1.4. Now this lens honestly is my favorite lens amongst all of the Fuji lenses that I have. And uh, here we go. I'll tell you one of the reasons for that is because of this focus clutch right here. Now, many of you photographers that don't shoot a lot of manual don't really understand this focusing clutch and what, why is there a need for it. Now, the 35-1.4 and the 23-1.4 also have this focusing clutch, and I really enjoy it because if I want to really zoom in on my focus, all I have to do is just, while I'm in autofocus, I can just pull it back, it's automatically in manual focus, and I can focus on what I want. Today's testimonial is all about using this lens and why I love it so much. And I've got to tell you, the biggest reason why I'm in the Fuji system is because of this lens. And I'm going to show you some, uh, some early photographs that I made with it while I was borrowing the lens from someone. And they are in my mind, they're really great. Uh, I'm a photojournalist, and so what I immediately thought of was <laughs> low light, 1.4, and what's it gonna look like? And the results are pretty amazing to me. Um, I don't shoot a ton of stuff in real low light, but believe me, it's well worth it. Now, the other thing that I didn't, I didn't know this when I first borrowed this lens, but it was around Christmas time, and I, I was staying at my, uh, my aunt's house, and you know she has all sorts of little knickknacks around, you know, Santa Clauses and things. And I said, I wonder how close this thing focuses. Now I hadn't done any research on this lens at all, so someone just let me borrow it, and I said, Oh, cool! I'm going to try this thing out. Let me break it down this way: it's Fuji's closest focusing prime lens that is ultra fast. Um, it focuses down to about six inches from the sensor, which is basically the length of this lens. <laughs> so, you know, with the other, uh, yeah, the other sun, sunshade on here, the other lens shade, which comes out to about here, it's like you can put, if you put the, <laughs> what you're focusing on right up next to it like this, it's gonna be in focus. I, that to me alone was almost the price of this lens. It's, it's you know, of course it's not one-to-one -one macro, it's only like 0.21 or whatever it is, but honest to God, when you can get that close at 1.4, and I'm gonna show you some examples of it, you won't believe it. Well, if you know, if you know the Fuji system and you know these lenses, then obviously you're gonna, uh, you're gonna know all about this. Now, the newer lenses, the, you know, the, the 1814, which I hear is unbelievable. Uh, the 2314, the new one, and the 3514, uh, excuse me, the 3314, all those lenses are beautiful, but none of them focus as close as this does. Now, the lens that gets the closest to this is the 18-1.4, and it's a little bit lighter, and the, um, what do you call it, the, the filter diameter is a 62, not a 67 like this is, and it's a little bit skinnier, it's skinnier. This is a much fatter lens, just like the lenses that, um, you know, the 23-1.4, the early ones, the 23-1.4 and the uh, 35 one four, and I believe it's probably got something to do with the focusing clutch. I don't know, but what I'm hoping is is that Fuji will not mess with this lens too much. Losing the focusing clutch, yeah, that'll probably happen when they decide to upgrade this upgrade this lens. But I'm hoping that it'll stay closer to the 18 one four, somewhere in that range, so that it doesn't take away that magical quality of smaller and lighter, although this is not a light lens, uh, and, and this lens that I have on here is not a Fujifilm one, but it's a, it, it's not really bad, it's not really heavy, but honestly, it's great. On my X-T5, it's really nice. Um, 
I can't complain about it at all. And we're going to show you some pictures right now that cover the whole gambit of uh, what this lens can do. You know, all the way from close up at 1.4, all the way to, you know, I don't know, F5.6, F8, something like that. And or maybe even F11, I don't know, something like that. Um, but I have to tell you, in use, in pro use, this is a great lens. And I'm sure that when Fuji comes out with their version of this, well, I'm not sure. They may mess around with it totally. But this, this lens here really has a lot of nice qualities to it, and the results are absolutely beautiful. And I'm hoping that Sony, uh, excuse me, I'm hoping Sony, yeah. I'm hoping that Fuji doesn't get too clinical about it because the 23, the new 2314 and the 3314 are very clinically sharp all the way around. And the same with the 18. There's no character in that. Really? You think about it. So let's get on to some photographs right now. These three shots are the ones that convinced me to buy this lens, the Fujifilm 16 1.4. Look how tight you can get with this lens, six inches. The beautiful detail in this uh, landscape shot of Duxbury Beach. Look at the way the detail is. It's beautiful. And then this lens, this shot coming up of the uh, Christmas concert here. You can see how sharp this guy's eyes are. Absolutely amazing. Now look how nice and tight you can get with this lens. 5.9 inches really makes a big difference when you're trying to go for a certain type of look. Look how sharp that is. It's just amazing. And you know, it. what it comes down to is, is certain lenses have that certain something and this lens sure does. This, this uh, little model here is only like, I don't know, eight inches high. It's really, really small, but really amazing. Then we zoom in on this lobster trap uh, right here. You can just see how close it gets. Really, really nice. Now these two shots of these flowers, these daffodils right here, look at the water droplets. They're just so sharp. So I think at like F2.8 or something. This shot here is a 1.4. Look how sharp the, the upper flower petals are. It's pretty amazing. Now, you may have seen these shots before, and maybe not. Uh, this is the pageant that happens every year in Rockport. And this guy on the right, his eyes are tack sharp at 1.4, 6400 ISO. The same here with the procession coming up the street. I think it was shot at 90th of a second at 1.4, 6400. It, it's really dark. And uh, this shot here uh, over at um, Pigeon Cove, blue hour, just amazing. Now, I've always liked to take this lens with me on assignment. You know, 16 or a 24 equivalent is my favorite lens to do that with. The problem is, is that we get some distortion here. You can see how fat his hand is. And, but the distortion helps me with this photograph here of these uh, weights that are used for uh, arch marine architecture. The shot here of this mural cleaner. Uh, I wanted to make sure I could get close enough to show most of this image that she's working on and it worked out really well this next image i got down nice and low to show yoda and uh the mandalorian i believe it is and it worked so well for this situation great stuff then i was at a jazz fundraiser and i wanted to show some detail of what was going on and there was a little chess involved and this next shot here is of the the jazz trio that was playing and it worked really really well it's low light and a uh, nice shot of the band. Now these next shots are just general wide angle shots. And I like to emphasize the foreground as much as I can here with these, uh, with this gear here waiting to be put in the water. And also with this shot here, I wanted to emphasize these blobs traps here on the left hand side with the door in the background just a little bit out. Now this next shot here, it was just a weird shot. I just want to centralize my focus on this 
lobster claw dressed up like Santa Claus. And then, of course, I wanted to emphasize this sign on the right-hand side explaining a little bit about bearskin neck, and it worked pretty well, I think. Now, this next shot here, I wanted to emphasize this bow with the numbers on it. So I shot this at 1.4, and I left the other boat out of focus, and it worked great. This shot here, I just want to zoom in and just emphasize this foreground of the name of the boat. And it's, it worked really well for this. The next shot is a shot up in New Hampshire of these lupins. And I really want to emphasize the flowers in the front and let the flowers in the back kind of go a little bit out. Hey, thanks for dropping by the channel and watching this video that I've done on the 1614. I really, really love this lens. And, you know, it's a WR lens. The thing is weather tight and it can take the abuse. It's great. And I got it used for about $600 uh, US. Great lens. And I'm probably never going to get rid of it. And I'm probably not going to, I'm probably not going to go to a new one if they come up with one because this lens has got some nice character to it. And I'm on the lookout for a 2314 because it's got character. I really loved that when I used it. So, uh, Please like and subscribe to this channel if you wouldn't mind. And check out capeannphototours.com because we've got some great tours here on Cape Ann coming up. And uh, go on to my website, capeannphototours.com. And, and if you're coming up in this area, please uh, sign up for a tour and we'll take you around and I know you'll enjoy it. So just remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it. And we're going to catch you next time.